so far, the company within Cerberus Den was lacking. As for Siri, well, that should be different entirely. Well, needed to do something in between work days. I welcome you to Cerberus' Den, the finest drinking establishment this side of the void. <laughs> I sure as heck haven't seen you before. You must be brand new. Just dapper like the River Acheron. The yeah, it screams vintage. So, are you liking existence thus far? She seemed nice, so I honestly told her, lots of tedious paperwork so far. Oh, don't I know it. Administrative bureaucracy just can't be escaped. I'll always find you. Eventually. But hey, that's why you figure out the small cracks in the system you can manipulate. Okay, newbie, before we continue, I got this little uh, game I play with every fresh faced patron. It's real simple. All you gotta do is answer a series of questions, and I'll craft a personalized drink inspired by what you said. It's like a quiz. I told her that I'm not sure about this. in sort of an odd situation, and you answer how you would react. I usually do four questions, and nothing else to it. Here we go. Prepare for question number one. You find yourself in front of a very difficult situation. Moments after having made a choice, you realize you made a grievous error. Regrets now gnaw at you for this poor decision. There are a few options for proceeding. I don't know why I said this, but I said, reload save game and redo the choice. Why did I say that? Time for question number two. Your friend got in deep trouble with the boss of a local criminal organization. Now a team of brutes are coming for you all. If you work together, you may be able to figure out this situation. What will you do? I'd assist my friends in achieving an optimal outcome. Next up, question three. Almost there. You behold two doors. One plain and old, the other forged of gold. The old one seems to imply disgrace and shame. The golden door cries of nobility and grandeur. It's up to your brave soul to make the first choice. Which door will you enter? The old one of prudence and modesty, as looks could be deceiving. Alright, final stretch. As I said, four is all anyone ever needs, right? of working a stable, albeit a monotonous office desk job, you are let go due to a corporate downsizing. This, however, has given you a chance to reinvent yourself. What will you become? That was interesting, so I said, I'd like being a mathematician working on the equations. to stability, prone to conformity. Mm-hmm, I've got the appropriate concoction in mind. Let's start off with a nice mixture of four centiliters of gin, one centiliter of elderflower liqueur, one centiliter of sugar syrup, two deciliters of club soda. Splash in 
and some lime juice concentrate, add several slices of well smashed cucumber and some cute ice. I was honest, I said. I'm pleased with the result. The quiz tells no lie. I think a suitable name would be Borehole. First one's on the house. I considered this drink reasonably yummy. Heck, an understatement of the century! Now what else can I get you? I asked her, what's your take on the janitor? You've been chatting to our spooky one, eh? <laughs> I don't mind the grump, it's a ghost thing. Gus especially has a pretty dang irascible nature, but there's a layer of performance to it. In truth, they've been hella helpful around the den throughout the ages. I'm grateful for that. Besides, the office itself couldn't operate without Gus and company. What else you got in mind? I asked, who else works in the office? Heck, were I able to count and name all the folks? Likely haven't fully realized the size of this place. You've got you Reapers, and all the myriad departments, the Custodian Legion, the weariless data grinders of the Calculatorium, the abysmal archive with its archivists. Cadaver resources, they're just plain odd, but someone's got to deal with the internal issues. Middle management, nobody knows what they actually do. Higher management, but they don't visit us, basically ever. Same with fate. Many of the regular workers come by the den, though, so keep your eyes and ears open. What else you got in mind? I'll be going now. Au revoir, Lil Reaper. That was certainly an interesting time. With nothing left to do on this day, I decided to go to bed. Need ye cures for ailments, so I trigger to ward off a curse? Well, scuttle me both, why don't you? Clear as a crisp spring morn, I remember the day, in the cave at the bottom of an ocean, which was guarded by a horrendous beast. So, had no choice but to underwater arm wrestle the kraken. All eight tentacles. Afterwards, I met a hag with crow feet wrinkles on her face and wrinkled crow faces on her feet. She knew me well, though we had not met before. Gifted me this ominous globe. Maybe it was a warning of a kind. Maybe she just fancied me. <laughs> I did die about a week later. That snow globe was an expensive acquisition, but I sense that it would be worth the cost. I recognize that the snow globe appeared to indicate a few things. As for social media, ripples from the toxic spill yesterday, a plague, An elderly person dying when it was their time, and medicine being improved. Uh huh. <sighs> well, since the social media was dealt with, what was today's assignment?
and then I remembered to open the letter. Two humans have to die. And any that could be helpful against these troubles should be spared. Hmm. This one, a medical examiner who has some vigilante tendencies. Then we have a scam artist who profits from misery, suffering, and the chaos he ends up unleashing. So, he was the first who would die. <sighs> Such an individual was undeserving of life. A morgue assistant that once did great deeds. <sighs> I'll need to think about that one. I thought at the time. As for this one, we have a tax cheat and a fraudster. <sighs> Sparing this one would be a mistake. Well, <sighs> it will. And what do we have here? A seemingly inept security guard that <sighs> has some uncertainties. Well, no matter how questionable. Indeed, disgusting some of these are. They have to be spared, regardless. The poacher, though. Ugh. It improved some things and made some other things worse. Welcome, Grim. It is the end of the week. Your performance review draws near. How do you think you have been doing? I told him that I thought I managed to follow the rules. Interesting. Hmm. Yes, your answer has been recorded for the psych eval. Now then, before the assessment, let us look over your daily conduct. I see the required profiles are all here. Excellent. This bodes well for the evaluation. I guess it is time to get started. I said that, I'm ready, let's do it. Now, where did I put those papers? Ah, here we go. Right, looking at these stats, the numbers say... Your conduct over the seven days has been most excellent. I am, sincerely, surprised and pleased by your display of loyalty. So much so that the office has deemed you fit for a raise. I thanked him. Oh, do not thank me, Grim. We are just getting started. Speaking of, the raise also comes with a prize. The office is proud to present you with an award of excellence. Display it proudly on your workstation. Do not let this cloud your judgment. You still have much to learn and many rules to follow. 
I found it easy to follow so far, so I said, piece of cake. Careful, Grim. That is exactly the kind of hubris that will lead to a downfall. As such, your seven-day evaluation period has concluded. You have passed. That is all. Until tomorrow, Grim. Fate seems satisfied with my performance. At least for the time being. I, I know what you're thinking. I do provide ancient powerful widgets. I decided to acquire a choice of music. Or more specifically, an item that would allow me to choose what was playing while I was working. <sighs> Quite an effective motivator in a number of workplaces. Shiver me timbers, tis a tale most sorting. I dare not even recall the details, but since you wish to hear it, I shall tell it forthwith. There I was, scouting some rickety office building downtown, and I saw this in an elevator. Went in, tore it out and made a run for it. <laughs> the device has immense power. Ye turn the knob, and infinite pleasant noises come from it. Some might even call it music. Let us see what... Ah. I found that... Crime had been... Taking some blows. While the... Ecology... Had been hit hard by the poacher. Well... Unfortunate, but <sighs> some things couldn't be avoided, I suppose. As for that day's quota. Three humans had to die that day. And if possible, anyone between 35 and 60 should be spared. Hmm. That one implied that... A soldier with a family tradition that wasn't into the profession, a clinical laboratory assistant that, although obnoxious, was good at their job, a motivational speaker, who could possibly persuade people to jump off a cliff if he wanted to, and a city planning commissioner that Sounded like that they had conflicting interests. What about this fifth profile? Yes, this city planning commissioner corrupt.
disruption implies chaos. And this job is not one that proves of chaos, so you'd be the first to die. As for this engineer musician, one that made musical instruments out of waste, hmm, that is an interesting As for this motivational speaker. I received the impression that, well, the lab tech would be the first to live, as although he was annoying, at least I assume that one was male, they knew what they were doing. So, now we have a choice between the engineer and musician, the motivational speaker, and the soldier. Which did I decide should live or die? Well, only one of them would die. And that one would be the Well, I think it's fairly obvious. That much charm and charisma is often used to manipulate and exploit. I'm not sure why I believe that. As for which one lives and which one dies of the two that remain, I decided that the engineer slash musician provided more of a contribution. <sighs> War was a grim business, and this is me that's talking, considering what I did. Grim. Ah, yes, there you are. Good, good. <clears throat> okay, now, listen up. <clears throat> Great work today. You fulfilled your tasks adequately, and all that. However, an emergency has occurred which requires my utmost attention, and I must depart for a couple of days. This stood out to me, so I asked, what kind of emergency? Okay, listen up and keep this to yourself. Some philosophers and researchers are attempting to set up a utopian community for the betterment of humanity. I must investigate their strategies for any flaws. Anyway, <coughs> 
While I am gone, another will be in charge. Even though you passed the evaluation, I cannot leave you without any supervision. You will have more freedom, sure, but it is not limitless. Therefore, you will have to continue your daily reports as usual. I will be informed of your progress. I asked the most pressing matter. Who would I report to? Why, you are already acquainted. It will be Lady Poddington, of course. Well, it would be an interesting few days ahead of me. Friend, your visit's like the sun. Regular. And warms the room. After finding nothing much of interest at Mortimer's that day, I decided to head to work. Eventually... Yes, it would indeed be an interesting few days. Under the supervision of Lady Pordington, Fate's cat. Who is quite considerate of me, at least in making sure I was getting paid. 